Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've actually got a little bit of a different video for you guys. I've never actually went back and revisited an old map uh, until today, and I actually reskinned one of your favorite maps that I've created. It's the Glacial Rings map, but now in lava style. And the reason why I wanted to do a reskin is because I already had these assets uh, changed over for the textures of a lava style. But I'm, I'm inspired to create a second rings map since you guys loved it so much, and I will be creating that quite soon. A few other things that I have updates for you guys. I have a new hide and seek coming out quite soon, and I'm finishing up the water race that I started a year ago. So those are two maps that are be coming out quite soon. I think I actually like this version much better uh, than the glacial rings. It just has a better look to it. I love the lava and the way that it shines on the map. And I did re reduce the fog a little bit, so that way it's actually a lot easier to play through the Easter egg part, which I will show in this video because a lot of people have been asking how to actually access it. Unfortunately, in the Lava Rings version, you don't have to go through all of the methods to get to the, the Easter egg, but I made it easy access for you guys right at the start to enjoy the second trial of this map. Let's get right into it. All right, here it is. Oh man, it looks so cool. I'm just gonna basically do it on normal just to show you guys what it uh, looks like. But this thing is a lot more intense with the colors. I like the red rings too. I think it just adds to the, the style. It's like a complete opposite of the ice rings challenge. Now I have a lot of things going on right now. Like I said, the, uh, the two new maps coming out uh, quite soon. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with the daily content and keep it unique. I hope you guys enjoyed the air dribble challenge as well. That was quite ridiculous. <laughs> And uh, also the invisible ball yesterday was kind of stupid, but you know, it was an idea. It worked. It was uh, something. That's for sure. I think I'm going to enjoy practicing on this version a lot better just because of the colors um, and the like just the intensity of the bloom and stuff. I think it's very cool. Uh, the, the map is entirely the same though. It, it basically functions the exact same way. I didn't change anything about the triggers or whatever. Uh, so I know people did complain about some of the further levels. Just don't hit the ring forehead. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I like this a lot better, I think. Look at it. Oh, so beautiful. Um, if you haven't seen this map before, uh, you might be a little bit confused. But you did see the comparison of the two maps at the beginning. Uh, I made this, I think, near the beginning of this year before all this quarantine stuff. But I, I'm, really, I'm really liking the idea of these rings maps and stuff and the aerial control you can get from them. So I will be trying to create a series of these. There's also an event coming up in the future that I can't really talk too much about, but I will be creating some sort of trials for it and uh, basically these little mini versions of them and, and make them pretty difficult. So they're like little short trials. You have to be like execute perfectly or something. Um, so I'm excited to get like a, a series of like five of these and then maybe a series of five little dribbling challenges as well. I know that for my dribbling challenge, you guys thought it was a little difficult, which I can understand. Uh, but I think it's also cool to have that sort of skill ceiling so you can practice those much more difficult mechanics and just get that your aerial control even better. Man, look at the the background. This is crazy. Oh, whoops, went a little bit too fast. I'm so distracted by the background. Look down there in the lava. It's crazy. Looks so cool. Yeah, but let me know in the comments if you guys like this style better, this theme. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will. <laughs> I don't know. I got rid of all of the Christmas lights because obviously that's like a, a winter theme thing, but... I was going to add like fire torches, but I thought I'd just leave it with the lava for now. I'll, I'll bring the fire torches into the new rings map once I create a second one. But I'm really enjoying this so far, like just going through. This is my first playthrough of the lava rings one ever. I just finished building it and I'm really, really happy with it. But let me know if you guys have any other challenges you want me to create. Like I know I could create another dribbling challenge, uh, but that took a lot of hours. Like I think that, was, that, that one took longer than this one. You know, you're a little bit more freehand with... Uh, rings, you can kind of just place them wherever. Look at the sun over there. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. You're a little more freehand to just kind of put, put rings wherever you want. Whereas in the dribbling challenge, you have to make sure that the car can drive like everywhere and, and all the ramps connect properly and the ball has to like go through the floor. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's really weird. Like it's such a different experience. I think I enjoyed making the rings map much more just because of that freedom. But at the same time, uh, dribbling challenge I think is more applicable to actually playing with the ball, you know, on a regular field. And I might create an air dribble challenge because I do want to get more into air dribbling. I don't think I've really practiced full field air dribbling past like a regular field size ever. So 
doing that air dribble challenge for the first time was definitely a struggle but uh i, pl I practiced it right after i made the video because i did it right when i woke up and I, I i made it to level 10 uh and then i had to stream so i did stop but i think i definitely could go through the whole thing it's just uh i think breakout was definitely the key to oh look at this it's so nice i don't know man i don't know why like reskins just it's one of the easiest things I've done for maps. Like this did not take long at all. I photoshopped all the, all the rocks and stuff, like all the textures, to make them. Basically, just look as natural as possible, but not putting too much effort into it. I, I took a lot of the old textures of the gla the glaciers and just uh, changed the hue, uh, color burned it a little bit, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the rest of it's the same. I didn't. I was gonna change the buoys, but like honestly, I kind of. I kind of dig it, <laughs> like in the in the lava there. It's pretty cool. I didn't change it at all. Like I kept the same uh, colors. The scheme kind of just worked. I, I think Bloom is a very underrated like thing to make maps look cool. Because without Bloom, I could show you the difference at the end. But without Bloom, it makes such a difference. Because all the emissive textures in this map give off that little hue of color, which adds to the whole thing. Um, some of the rocks don't have the emissive texture on it, which is like the, the one that gives off light. Like you can see the rocks on my left there. They don't have the emissive texture, but there's these mini rocks that I put them on to add a little bit more flair to it. I tried changing the texture of the little fragments of rocks and it didn't really work. So instead I put the lava texture on it, um, which kind of looks cool when you look at, a, uh, at them in large scale. You can see some of them in the background on the left there. We kind of passed them on that level. So far, so good. This is looking really nice. Like going through the first run here, I'm just kind of looking around to see if I see any changes before I release it for the video. But I'm really, I don't have any complaints. It looks really good. So I did, it did reduce the fog, which means you can see more of the level as you go through it, which I kind of like as well. Uh, the reason why there was all that fog in the first one was because of the Easter egg that people ended up ruining, any, ruining anyways, but. I tried to make it hard to find the end, but people lo looked through the code of the map, or like through the, uh, the text file, and they read the, the Easter egg out and they just sent it to me within the first five minutes. And I'm like, bro, you can't even finish the, the map in five minutes, so I knew they were cheating. <laughs> it does look really nice though. This is one of the hardest levels in the, the set of five here. so. For people who didn't know, there's actually four sets of levels, basically, and the rings get smaller in each set. This one's one of the longest ones, I would say. Wow, this is really intense. It looks so nice with the lava, though. It'd be really cool to see uh, two runs back-to-back -back with the reskins. I might try to do that and replicate it. I don't know if I can, though. I mean, positional data could work because it's the same map. I could actually try and put two of them side-by-side. -side. That'd be kind of nice. It might be another video. Let me know if you guys want to see that, actually. I could probably do it. I don't know if the replay file will work uh, quite the way I'm expecting, but uh, I think replays really just deal with positional data, and you can load any map with that replay data, so as long as the, the cars behave the same way. So it should the, all the collision data should be the same, so I could probably put the two replays next to each other and show like a comparison of the reskins. That'd be actually kind of cool. Oof. I'm actually thinking I might do it for this one. I might be talking about all this, but it might be happening right now. <laughs> uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. If I can get it working in the replays, I'll definitely do it. But I just love the look of this one. And with this whole reskin thing, like it's a concept that I've I've wanted to explore in some of my old, older maps. Like I definitely want to reskin the beer pong map. That that one needs some work. It's quite old, and it was back when I was I was not even able to do texturing, or I wasn't able to because I didn't know how to do it. So I just created colors. So that's why the uh, beer pong is literally a split of blue and orange. <laughs> it's kind of lame, but nowadays with the stuff I can do, like I'm sure I would make a way better, you know, ping pong table, all that stuff. Revisit all those ideas. I'm also learning how to model a little bit more. Like I'm, I'm learning on my own, so I've been watching tutorials and stuff, just so I can do more, more with my own models. Because I've been starting to do a little bit more texture, 
uh, blending and stuff like that. Like I've, I've got Blood Gulch from Halo Combat Evolved, so the first version. And uh, so far so good, it's working. Uh, I've been trying to like, basically how textures work is you tell polygons where uh, a part of a texture or, or like a UV map is, it's called UV mapping. You tell a mesh where a certain texture should lo like be located on like this ring, for example, or the rocks. And then when you import the texture, it matches up to it. So you'll have these like spread out textures inside one like 2048 by 2048 uh, picture that cover a certain certain object. So with Blood Gulch, the way that I got the exported file of the map is that the, the entire floor is one mesh, which means that when I UV map it, I have to UV map the paths and all that stuff on the one mesh. And because because Rocket League is Unreal Engine 3, uh, it doesn't actually <laughs> doesn't actually transfer that well because you can do a, this thing called like, you can tile your UVs, but with Unreal Engine 3, with Rocket League, you can't do that. So I have to actually like just straight up do a strategy where I have like, let's say a grass texture. And uh, I, I want to put stone on the outside near the grass. I have to take the stone texture over top and overlay it with grass and then erase where I want the grass to show through. I mean, it's a very useful uh, technique, but it'll be a bit difficult because also the texture resolution. So like um, the textures, let's say I make it 4096 by 4096, but the entire map is spread out to a, a full size of blood, blood gulch for the cars. Um, that texture will start to get more and more stretched as I make the map bigger. And since it's one mesh, it's kind of like a little bit difficult. I could split up the path of like the, 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 the dirt and stuff, but then you would have the issue where you would, you would have no blending between the two textures, like grass and dirt would just like literally be a line between the two. So that's the big issue. I, I do want to have nice blending. So it looks, looks better, but the plan is to make that map a capture the flag map. And, uh, I'm pretty sure I, expl I explained it in my invisible, the invisible uh, ball video, but I wanted to do like stuff with invisible balls and stuff, but obviously the ball cam does not work properly. So that's out the window, but I did discover uh, another thing I could do where I have a map where m meshes only show up if you're a certain distance away from them. So I could do some interesting like stuff like, <laughs> like sort of like jump scares or something where it like, you have to be a certain distance away from a, from an object for it to show up. So that way I can do like some secrets or something like that. Oh, I failed. Oops. Uh, yeah, but it'd be pretty interesting to see what I can do with all these new ideas. There's always new stuff I'm creating. You guys know that this is like, if you include this as a new map, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily consider it, but this is around map 50. Uh, cause I've got like four or five maps in the works right now. That's pretty cool. So there's 20 levels for you guys who don't know. So there's only two more levels after this one. But honestly, I'm just very, very happy that the reskin moved over so well. Like it only took me, <laughs> this one only took me about two hours to do this because I just replaced all the, like all the water meshes where I could just replace them with the lava texture and they seamlessly connected. So the lava looks great. Uh, people I know have asked for moving lava textures, but that's not possible, unfortunately. Wow, this is so fun. It's actually so much more fun. I don't know why. I think it's just cool because I spent so many hours on one map and then to create such a cool looking masterpiece in like two hours is very cool. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> just kind of spewing a bunch of stuff. It's sort of like a, not really a podcast, but just talking about my ideas that I had. Since, since you guys have seen this map before, it's just a different style. I thought I would use this time to talk with you guys. See if you have, see if you have any questions about certain things or what I'm, what I'm up to, what I'm, what I'm doing next, but just know that I'm not stopping. <laughs> and a lot of people say, don't get burnt out. But honestly, this, I really enjoy it. I'm someone who like would sit in Minecraft and build these big cities block by block. So I never get bored of that kind of stuff. I just like being able to create and share with other people. And every time I see someone say, wow, this is insane. Like I, it, it keeps me motivated to make more because it just shows that people do appreciate it even though like some people say i should have more subs than i do i don't really care like it's i'm happy with what i what i've got for a community all of you guys are really nice like everyone's really supportive 
and my my twitch my twitch community is great too like i don't even really need moderators most of the time there's a few people that come in with new accounts that say stupid crap but it's not a big deal most people are just really nice and you know supportive of each other which is really cool to see so here's the end wow that's pretty crazy it's really incredible like that i was able to just change a few textures and uh make an entire map out of that basically with a reskin but here's the uh the new thing i added so there used to be a, an easter egg that you have to go through and uh i'll go actually show it to you because he's still there <laughs> we'll skip to uh when i find him so the old easter egg in the glacial rings map used to be if you if you completed impossible mode it would say find the man in yellow so that would be the only clue you would get uh, which is pretty difficult because the Easter egg was for $500, so I wanted to make it pretty difficult to find. But there was this this snowman here, and he doesn't work anymore. I turned it off for this map. But if you if you talk to him, he would say, "Find all 30 of me, or of my my kind." And there were 30. There's still 30 snowmen. I mean, they're lava men, I guess now. But uh, I wanted to keep them there just because it's a reskin, right? So basically these snowmen you'd go to each of them after you talk to the the yellow snowman and they would give you a code after you found all 30 when you talk to the yellow snowman again and it would give you a code of the uh the little lights and they corresponded to the lights right here they were there were lights on top of here and you could touch them in order and then it would send you to this place but on this map i actually just made it so you could just go there so i i made a little gateway and this is the easter egg that i uh that i hid it's actually longer than the original map uh, however, if you know the way you're going, which it's now easier without the fog, um, you'll find the end. The fog used to be super, super intense. You'd have to go all the way around the entire map. And, uh, funny enough, it actually does loop on itself. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's, that's the Easter egg. I mean, if you want to go explore it in the, uh, the Glacial Rings map, oops. If you want to explore it in the Glacial Rings map, you can check it out. But the, uh, the whole Easter egg loops around the entire map. Which I won't spoil the entire thing, so you can go explore it yourself. Uh, but here's where it loops back on itself if you miss the uh, the exit. Now the new Easter egg on this map is much easier to find. It only says congrats on finding the Easter egg. I don't say five hundred dollars, whatever. I remove that part because I still to this day have many people message me saying, "Hey, did I win the five hundred dollars?" Which uh, obviously I'm not gonna give five hundred dollars to every single person who uh, finds this Easter egg. I would be more than bankrupt. But as you can see, the fog is still pretty intense, but it's not as bad as it was in the first version. Uh, here is where the hidden path was, which you can definitely see a lot better now. So you'd usually come from this way. Uh, let's say you're coming like this and flying by here. So it used to be that you'd fly here and you couldn't see that ring up to the right. But now it's much easier to see. And that's where you would have to like fly up and go to the end. So if you go up here and come to the ring then it'll tell you you found the easter egg so there's not much to it on this one obviously because it is a reskin so i did want to i did want to keep the track back here because i think it is a pretty cool part of the map and if you want to practice your aerial control on this part it's a lot a lot more interesting uh but there it is congrats you found the easter egg and you're done so yeah i'm pretty happy with this reskin uh let me know if you guys wanted me to reskin anything like my dribbling challenge or anything like that to make it a little bit more interesting change up the scenery but uh, until next time we'll catch you guys in the next video